Before I do anything else, TPS2 is 1.26 volts, TPS1 is 4 volts, perfectly normal. Next page, I'm just snapping the throttle showing you normal reactions of this potentiometer. One's rising, when the one rises, the other falls. Why is it done that way? It's drive by wire, it's safety. We have to make sure that this throttle is in fact the correct position and it uses two different sensors to make sure that we're good all the time. You have any discrepancies at all, it puts it in a lockout mode and no acceleration and that's what you get. Questions on the baseline of this. Okay, so let's do some circuit analysis and what did i do in that capture what did i just do i unplugged it i unplugged it i was shocked to see this and this goes to your original question i keep picking on you because i knew we were going to be talking about that a whole bunch what if we're reading zero what if we're reading five how do you know if it's normal how do you know if it's not and i don't have i guess I keep picking on that question because I don't really have a good answer because this is the same car on the same sensor and I have one that goes to five and I have one that goes to zero on the same sensor. I, I don't have an answer for you and I can't find this anywhere in service information. Where is this information? It ain't there unless I got a factory diagram. I don't know why they're using a bias on, on TPS2 and no bias on TPS1. Doesn't matter, this is the car, there's nothing wrong with it, I'm just showing principles here. So can we apply some of them? Wiring identification without a diagram, sure. Let's look at the lines and see what we got. Measuring the first one, zero volts. Next one, zero volts. Next one, five volts. Next one, 487. Do you guys understand how I was able with that final measurement to plug in at least TPS2? Because what do we have on TPS2? unplugged. T TPS2, I had five. So when I go under, how do I know the difference between the reference and the signal is my meter pulled the shit out of that uh, bias, didn't it? It pulled it down a, a significant amount. That's my meter that's causing that. That's TPS2. That's my reference. I've identified two wires, no wiring diagram, no service info, common knowledge. 487, that's TPS2. Five volts, that's TPS1. Now I have a question here. I'm not sure which one of these two is the sensor ground and which one is TPS1. And I'm not sure that we can look at this. Maybe, maybe I could say the 0.29 is the TPS ground. I'm not totally sure. I, I don't know by these two. And in fact, I don't remember. So uh, where did I go from here? Let's Let's talk about identifying which one, what, what, what could we do right now from what we learned already, regardless of what I show next, because I don't remember what I show next, what, what could we do? I want to identify my TPS1 that does not have a bias, and I want to do some circuit testing. I want to drive the voltage high, watch the computer change, drive the circuit low, watch the computer change what's already low. I want to drive it high, that's what I want to do. I, maybe I have a fixed zero volt signal on TPS1, that's our perspective here, and I want to make sure that my wiring integrity is good. I don't know which one the ground is, which one TPS1 is. I can grab a diagram, but maybe we don't have one. And we want to do a quick circuit integrity test. You're in your buddy's driveway, you're having a beer, you don't have Mitchell with you, you don't have any wiring diagrams, his car ain't moving, you got your voltmeter and some knowledge up here in your head. You got your voltmeter and a little code reader that you can read at TPS circuit one low. Let's do a measurement, let's see. Is my wiring bad? Is my throttle body bad? Is my sensor bad, right? That's where we are. What can we do? I like the diode test from what we learned. The diode test, it makes the most sense because all I need to do is click, click, right? I'm right there, all my leads are all connected exactly like they should be. What am I doing? Scan data, so I threw the scan data back up. No bias, so I'm getting ahead of myself here. What did I do? Oh, I went to the ohm scale. Why did I choose the ohm meter? Because the ohm meter, I had to reverse polarity of my leads, remember? Okay, I, I did this differently than I thought. I'm just using my ohm meter. Remember, the sensor grounds go back to the computer, then get externally grounded. If I'm already grounded, I like the diode test better. I, I should have picked the diode test here, um, but I chose the ohm meter not to inject voltage, but to tell me which one the sensor ground was. This one is my sensor ground. Zero ohms. 
This one is my signal circuit. That's 250,000 ohms, that's M ohms. That's the signal. TP, I was wrong then. The 0.29, now we know. That's the signal, TPS one. That's the ground. All I did was switch my meter to ohms to tell me that. That's what I did. I like the bias or the diode one too. Does everyone understand that test? It's going from the sensor into the board. Remember the ground circuit that I drew inside, right? You got these guys, all these different sensors using this ground circuit, and then this gets externally grounded. Well, one of those comes out to TPS1. So if I have my ohm meter connected, right? That was two ground, what does, what's it doing? It's going this way into the board, outside the computer, because it's externally grounded, then comes back to my other lead that's connected to ground, zero ohms. That's my sensor ground circuit. Now we know which one the signal is. We could have done that differently. There isn't one way to do it. I like the other suggestion, the diode scale, but let's continue. Is that what I do next? That is the one I do next, the diode measurement. Now that I know that's my signal, I'll just switch it to diodes. I put that in there, and what do we see on the scan? So I went from zero volts up to 1.89 volts. I know that that's saying 193. I don't mind a few millivolts difference between the multimeter and the scan tool, but how is the TPS-1 circuit integrity? Sensor to computer. It's good. Why are you doing step one of that flow chart? Making you disconnect the computer, disconnect the sensor, and ohm the wire. Nope. I'm not doing it. I reviewed the ohm scale in case you forgot, right? Tried going through. I want to inject voltage with my ohm meter, right? It ain't working. Look, I'm pushing the button. Why, why am I having no change? This is flat line the whole time. What am I doing wrong? It worked for the diode scale. Good thought. It worked for the diode scale without cranking it. It's not working for the ohm scale. Why? I, for the ohm scale to inject voltage, you got to reverse your polarity because it sends voltage on the other wire. Just, it does. Don't know why, it does. Yeah, I mean, I know, we know the diode scale is polarity sensitive too. You know, diodes are polarity sensitive. And so um, you would want to connect it, I guess, how it's drawn, you know, positive to the anode on, and negative to the cathode and... You know how I always remember that? Cathodes like cat, like cat piss, and it's negative. The ohm scale, can't use it, can't use it, can't use it, right? Until I do what? What did I do from this picture to this picture? I just switched my polarity, and then, I, then now I'm scrolling through, and you can see how I can inject voltage with my ohm meter. So that's cool. If you're going to use the ohm meter, that's fine. I like the diode scale better um, because I don't have to move my leads, and I don't have to remember that.